Well, during our visit to Kumasi to launch uh, John Yusuf's special assignment next today, we took the opportunity to visit the Konfanochi <laughs> Sports site, which I am so proud of. I am happy I went there to do the discoveries, and I'm happy I went alone without Roland. So here's a playback <laughs> <laughs> of me at the Konfanochi Sports site. Enjoy it. Hello, my name is Mama Vioso Abwaji, and I'm on a special assignment. Special assignment at the Kompanochi Teaching Hospital. Uh, so we're in Kumasi, and our main aim is to see the finishing of the maternity units of the Kompanochi Teaching Hospital, a structure that's been uh, put up over 40 years ago, but has since not been completed. But I'm also taking advantage of my stay in Kumasi to take a, a look at a few sites of interest. And one place that you will not miss when you're inside Konfuanoche Teaching Hospital proper is this structure right here is the Konfuanoche Sword Side and it's got a great history behind it apparently uh, Konfuanoche put a sword in the ground this is way back in 1695 and nobody has been able to since 1695 to remove the sword if you think you're brave enough they'll tell you come and try but there's a man who will tell us a lot more about the history and he's meeting us now that's mr from home man so hello thank you right. so you take us to see the sword right yeah okay let's okay. go okay you're welcome once again thank you very much come from the sword site mm. and uh, this site is where exactly the legendary priest Okonfuanoche planted a sword in 1695. And he did not put the sword here actually to tell us how powerful he was. But the sword I'm going to show you is here to tell us where the kingdom of Asante started. Also, it's going to tell us where the golden stool of the Asante kingdom came from and it also represents the unity of the Asante kingdom. Before the day the priest Anochi planted the sword here, there were no particular group of people known as Asantes, but we were having Akans. And these Akans were living in individual states. Each of the states was an independent state. Even though they were independent, they still wanted power over each other. And what is power about? Power is about people and wealth. So if you want to be powerful, you need to get the people and the wealth. Because you have the people, you need to get the wealth to move with it. So these Akans used to have interstate or interfamily war and came to a point one of the states among them called Dintra became very powerful. In fact, some of the states were like the Mampong, Minsuta, Kukufu, Berkwai, Asumina, Adanse, Ofenso, Ejeso, and etc. All these states and the people living there were Akans, and they were independent, like I told you. And because of struggling of power, they used to fight among themselves like interstate or interfamily war and came to a point one of the state danger became very powerful to the extent that whenever they wage war they defeat so the dangerous people the people in the interstate states decided not to work not to do anything anymore but rather to stay home for the conquered states to come and serve them so every 40 days people from these individual states have to carry firewood plantain fibers, red clay from their various states to the intra to sell. When they go, they will be more treated. The plantain fibers that I'm referring to were used as towels then. Uh, the firewood were used to set fire for cooking and the red clay were used as paint to paint their walls and also to build houses as well. So they will be taking all these items to the intra. And if you go to the Intra, 
and you're a woman, you find yourself in danger, and a man from danger sees you and he's interested in you, that's all. You have nothing to say, you can't complain. The man is interested in you, whether you're a wife or not, he is interested in you. Even if you complain, they will tell you you are even lucky to get somebody from here saying he's, <laughs> he's interested in you. So this thing went on for a very long time. And the people realized that this kind of treatment is inhuman. And the Nigeria people, the people in the Nigeria state uh, were able to do all these things to them, all because there is no unity among them. Because whenever they go to the Nigeria and they are doing it to someone, because the other person is not coming from the same place with him or her, the person doesn't care. But if they go and each one of them cares about other, each other, it can continue. So the people realize that it's only unity which can help them to put a stop to this. So they decided to come together as one group of people to wage war against the Denchra state. Mm, wow. And the people gathered in a forest here. This place was a very typical forest. This place where we have yes. the famous Komfuan Hospital. Yes, it was well, a very typical forest. Where, and so they had it in the forest here to have a secret meeting. This secret meeting, meeting took place here in this forest to make an arrangement on how these people will be able or can be able to uh, overthrow the Denchra state. Mm. So they gathered here and agreed to come together. But the problem at that time was leadership because each one of them was a leader from where he was coming from and yet wanted to be a leader here as well. And you know in Akan, if you are putting into a leadership position in your family, like a family head or a chief of a town, everywhere you go, your people would like to see you coming back home with an achievement. So when they came and there was such a position, every one of them was willing to take this position back home for the people to know that he came and there was a position and he fought for it. So it became a big program. So Confanetti was among them and said, now that all of us here are interested to be a leader, it means we cannot choose a leader. This is not our duty. We should leave this to the God, the Supreme God, and the gods of the land to help us get a leader. So my advice is we should go back home, pray and fast for three days and come back here. The gods will be present and help us get a leader. So when we are coming back on the third day, we should come along with our thrones, the tools that we have in our palace that gives us power as chiefs. We should bring them along. So each one of them brought his blood to here and a big devil took place here like this. That's an artist's impression. Here in the middle of the people, the priest Anochi invoked the gods and the golden stool was conjured from scars. He came and fell onto the laps On of On this ground? Yes. On the laps of So this Hussein. story that we've heard, this story of the golden stool, this is the forest then yes. where this happened? Yes, actually, this place. So the golden stool descended from scars, came and fell onto the laps of Hussein Tutu, making him unconscionable leader. Then a sword was given to him to swear to protect the people and the stool. The people were also sworn to protect him and the golden stool. Then the priest said, before we were coming to this place, we didn't know each other. I didn't know you before. You didn't know me before. But now we are one people. So it's time for us to unite. It's time for us to come together as one group of people. So part of individual hair and fingernails were cut, brought together and bent into ashes. Some of these ashes were mixed with palm wine for all of them to drink. It was like covenant. Then he dig a big hole here. Which is what we see. Yes, he dig a big hole and took all the stools that individual chiefs brought along, the throne that they were having before. He took them away from them, making each one of them powerless. Then buried those stools with the rest of the ashes and kept the sword on top to mark where the stools were buried and said, if any one of them goes and come back here 
to take his tool, the unity they have will collapse. Why? And he also told them that from today onwards, the golden stool is going to be the embodiment, the continuity, and even the soul of the new group. So each one of them should try as much as possible to fight to defend the stool and its occupants. If somebody touches the stool, he touches the occupant. If somebody touches the occupant, he touches the stool. So they should try as much as possible to protect the two. How, ma how many stools were buried? Eleven states. So this, the, these stools that we see behind you, what do they represent? No, these are here for the visitors who come okay. here to. So I can I can comfortably yeah, sit on any of them. It. Sometimes okay. we sit. I can sit with you while we are having the talk. So after he kept the sword on it and he told them, if you come and remove your stool, the unity will collapse. He gave a prophecy. And that the prophecy is what brought you to here today. The prophecy which came through is the one which has brought you here today. He said, a time will come. This place we are will be a birth place for many and death place for many. He put it this way, people will come from here, people will go from here. Meaning people are going to born here, people are going to die here in a time to come. And at, during that time, they, uh, and at that same period, if you come to this site with any sickness or diseases and you didn't get medicine, it will be difficult for you. And this so it's no coincidence that we have a, a teaching hospital here, yes. the second largest in the country. In the country. Hmm. So this happened in the early 50s. He said all these things in 1695. Over 200 years after, this prophecy began to come through. When the then governor of Gold Coast decided that there must be a hospital in the northern sector of Gold Coast, and this hospital must be built in Kumasi. So, public health department were tasked to design the hospital. And they designed the hospital, and after designing the hospital, they awarded a contract to a company called G. Walker and Slater Company, a British and European company, to come down to Kumasi to survey Kumasi City and look for the best place for this hospital to be constructed. They came and agreed this place would be the best place for this hospital. So when it was agreed by the fourteenth king of Asante, the tomb for Sir or Sir Ajima Prempe the second. When he awarded the land to them and they were crawling the land, the contractors came across the soil in the forest here. And they thought it was good. They were right. Because those days there were no banks for people to keep money. So you have money and you want to keep it, you keep it either in your room. But if you think your room is not safe for you, you just bury it. You somewhere. just take it back uh, to your backyard. Look left and right. If you see nobody is coming, then you take and bury it. If you bury it and you leave it like that in rain one, two, three times, it will become difficult for you to locate it. So you have to put a signal there. So when they found the soil in the forest, stuck in the forest like that, they thought somebody has kept his properties here. So the contractors decided to take this without telling anybody. And according to them, as they were digging around it, instead of the soil showing up, it was going down. So they brought a machine to excavate it, to uproot it with force. They brought a the machine, the sword became invisible. They searched for the sword all over the place, they couldn't find it. So they were scared, they tried to tell people about the mystery going on here. A lot of people hear this. They come here, look at the sword, they never believed them. Many people have been here, including the Yeah, hope you enjoy that, absolutely.